Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Yesterday, we got a guided tour of USS Cooperstown, a Freedom-class littoral combat ship. And it was interesting walking around talking with the crew of that ship about uh, how many redundancies they had for different things. The answer is not as many as on the battleship. We're here in Central Station, which is one of four places you can steer the battleship from. So why do modern ships have fewer redundancies than an Iowa-class battleship? The short answer is that they're not designed to take hits. They're designed with close-in weapon systems and stealthy systems, emissions controls, things like that, to prevent them from ever being seen and shot at. If they take a hit, it's going to do significant damage. If New Jersey takes a hit, it will probably do damage, but there's a backup if the main system is knocked out. You can't shoot down an incoming battleship caliber shell, so the Iowa-class battleships had to be designed to take hits. That meant both armoring them to prevent those hits from being too deadly, uh, from being able to punch all the way through into the critical parts of the ship, but also having multiple redundant stations where if this helm gets knocked out, we've still got another one that we can switch to. Oftentimes, it's not an issue of has that projectile defeated our armor plate? So our armor plate can stop a lot of projectiles, but sometimes the force that that incoming projectile imparts onto the ship does enough shock damage that it's still gonna knock stuff offline. Some of these systems are very fragile. Uh, some of them may not be mounted as well as they should be. This, this ship was built in a rush in wartime, and you don't really know that until the ship takes a hit. Uh, modern ships do do shock tests on the first of class of the uh, ships. I'm not sure that the Iowa class did that uh, when they were first commissioned. They might have just been rushed right out to the war zone. So things get knocked offline and don't work all the time, and that's okay because there's a backup. The other issue is something's always down for maintenance. You've got a ship like this with over 900 electric motors, uh, over 800 telephones, over uh, 3,000 light fixtures. Like there, there are so many individual systems on the ship that something is always going to be down for maintenance. These systems are not operating in an ideal climate. The climate control isn't that great. There's salt water around, there's humidity, temperature changes, you name it. There, there's all sorts of stuff going on. There's 18 year old boys who this might be their first ship. Maybe they don't know the system as well as they should. Things will break down or fail. And so Iowa class battleships have a massive amount of redundancy built in, not just to account for enemy damage, but to account for things being down for maintenance. So what sorts of systems on the battleship have redundancies? Like I said, there's four different places you can steer from. There are 11 different places you can fire the main battery guns from. The fire control systems are all duplicated somewhere forward and somewhere on a completely different deck back aft. And then you can also cross connect main battery fire control and secondary battery fire control, both the directors and the computers. So now you're, you're multiplying out the number of spares for each system that you potentially have as you start to take damage. Lighting circuits have multiple redundancies. Most rooms have at least two switches. Half of the lights are fed just from the main switchboards. Half of the lights are fed both from the main switchboards, but also from the auxiliary diesels if the mains go out. And if all the switchboards and the diesels go out, that's fine because we've got the emergency battle lanterns that'll come on. Likewise, the ship's gyro compass, there's two of them, both on opposite ends of the ship. If we lose electrical power and neither of them are working, we've still got magnetic compasses. For water, our two main evaporators are in one space, but there's another evaporator, again, on a completely different level, on the complete opposite end of the ship, so that if something hits and knocks out the main evaporators, we've still got a backup. Electrical generation is the same. We've got four main switchboards, one in each of the engine rooms, and then two auxiliary switchboards, one in each of the, each of the diesel generator rooms. 
So we basically have power generation capability from the front of the ship to the back of the ship. We've already talked about, hey, uh, this space that's fed from this engine room is knocked out. It's probably duplicated with a, a parallel circuit in another engine room, but you can also run the casualty battle cables from whichever engine room is still operating through the various biscuits, we've done a video on this before, uh, up to wherever you have lost your power. So this biscuit you can see has an armored 440 power cord running down below to this engine room. This engine room presumably is still making power, and the engine room on the other side of that bulkhead has lost power. So what do we do? We take the casualty battle cable, and you notice here it's got three different colors, so if it's lit you can tell which of the three legs uh, each cable is, and it's got a different number of bumps. Black has one bump, white has two bumps, and red has three bumps. So even in the dark, you can tell what you're dealing with. And you come over here to the biscuit, and black has one notch cut out of the edge, white has two notches, and red has three notches. So you know to plug this in here, and white in there, and red in here. And again, because the power generation stuff is spread out along uh, the entire length of the citadel, odds are there's an engine room relatively close to where you need it that you can run power from. A feature I've never seen on modern ships, but does show up on Battleship New Jersey, is sometimes when electrical power fails, Many of your systems, including the Mark 8 uh, Range Keeper, our main fire control computer, it has a hand crank. So if you lose all power, the turrets have a battery backup so they can continue to train and elevate. The smaller guns have manual backup so they can continue to uh, rotate and be manually served, uh, everything from the hoist to the gun mounts themselves. The computers have manual hand cranks so they can continue to send solutions to the guns. And then of course, your internal communications. Not only do you have just a ton of internal communication circuits, you've got sound powered circuits on top of that. And again, the thing that powers a sound powered phone is sound, not electrical power. So your own voice speaking into the phone vibrates a membrane in there that creates enough power to transmit your voice down the line to another phone. So there's all sorts of stuff. you can communicate what you're seeing on your computer that's hand cranked down here up to your gun that's being hand cranked up there. So even if the ship loses all power, we get into a situation like Bismarck got into and, and everything's been shot away, the ship can still fight, which is critical because the Iowa class battleships are a gun system that they had to design a ship around to move that gun system where it was needed. Everything else can fail as long as the gun system is still where it needs to be and is still functional. And modern ships just don't do that, and so they're not designed with that sort of redundancy. I will say, a modern ship is much less likely to be detected and take a hit in the first place, but at least an Iowa can take one on the chin and continue to dish it out. We'd like to thank the crew of Cooperstown for a really great tour. We had a, an excellent time on board, and the ship is really well maintained and Im impressive to see. Make sure you look up when there is a Navy week or a Fleet week in your area for the chance to get on board an active duty Navy ship and compare it to some of the museum ships that you've gotten to visit. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support and there's a link in the description below for more ways you can donate to support the ship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the museum. Thanks for watching.